So without further ado, I'd like to present your third grade class in the year 2011 at Sunnyside Environmental School in Portland, a musical. Thomas Jefferson argued Lewis and Clark to write in journals every day. He 
Here's what we wrote when we were close to Portland. November 10th, 1805. Rainfire and hunter last night continued this morning. We are all wet events and many other articles. November 12, 1805. All wet and cold are many also wet. Fortunately, the men are healthy. November 14, 1805. The rain continued all day, all wet. All wet! Okay, okay, I get the picture. I get the right word in Portland. Ruff, ruff, ruff.
Life on the trail is hard. There are many dangers. Many people die of disease, but they journeyed in hope of finding good land in Oregon. Women on the trail had to cook, clean, and sew all the clothes for their family. Sometimes unexpected things happened. One woman wrote in her journal, Last night my clothes got out of the wagon and an ox ate them up. Sheesh! And then, like any journey, the kids always ask questions. Beautiful city 
than your ugly, stinking Boston. It should be called Boston, that's fine. No, it should be called Portland, that's fine. Boston. Portland. Portland. Boston. Portland. Boston. Port okay, break it up, break it up. You, stand over here. You, over there. I know, I said all this by flipping the coin. You call it heads. Tails. Well, tails it is. Hmm, best two out of three. Okay, best two out of three. You call it again. Heads. Tails. Again. Hmm, best three out of five. No, Mr. Lovejoy. She's Portland, fair and square. So the town was named Portland. More and more houses were built. A newspaper was started. A dock was built and Portland became a major port. Many trees were cut down and the clearing was expanded. But soon, Portland got another name, Stumptown. You see, when the men cut down the trees, they often left the stumps still on the ground.
you hear that? Hear what? The train's coming, the train's coming. Oh no, I think I'm going to the train right now.
Here's a beautiful song about roses that was sung at the first Rose Festival in 1907.
Harvey published his opinions in the paper, and a lot of people believed what he said. Harvey disliked anything that suggested social progress. For example, he did not think children should go to school beyond elementary school. If they want their children to go to school beyond age 12, let them pay. Public schools should not be turned to nurseries of idleness. Ab Abigail became a teacher, owned a hat making business, and published her own newspaper called the New Northwest. She was Harvey's opposite in that she was a supporter of the human rights, especially the women's rights. We need to build a better world for every woman. Women work at the kitchen sink without wages. Women work at the cooking stove, the rolling pin, the washroom, and the ironwork. All women without pay, they should at least have the right to vote. We don't want the belligerent females sitting hands, clock, 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 deciding our fate, ignorant voters would be dangerous. I always heard the difference between a man and a mule. There was a man who changed his mind. We are the only state in the West where women who still not have the right to vote. It is, it is high time the men of the state gave us this right. But Harvey this was as, as stubborn as a meal. Every time an election was held, he wrote article after article telling the men not to let the women have the right to vote. Women will get the right to vote over my dead body. Then Harvey, my dear brother, I'm going to have to live a little longer than you. And she did! <laughs>
states collapsed. Millions of dollars have been lost, and millions of people are out of work. This was the start of the Great Depression. Times became really hard. Many banks closed, so people couldn't get their money. Thousands of people lost their homes. Then a great man came along. He was in a wheelchair. He couldn't walk because he had a disease called polio. He was very kind. His name was Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He said, back to work and we're calling our plan the New Deal. In 1932, Roosevelt won election for president and things got better, much better. There were two Roosevelt projects near just Portland, the Bonneville Dam and Timberland Lawn. Roosevelt himself came to Oregon in 1938 to dedicate these projects. There was a song he used to sing and the whole country sang it too and made people stay good and forget the department from the breakfast. Thank you. 
very beautiful parks. Forest Park in the northwest section of town is the largest park within the city's borders anywhere in the world. Did you know that Portland also has the smallest park in the world? Here to tell us about the park is one of the parks that are closed. Did you know that Portland has its own park for us at the I've heard it's the smallest park in the world. It's no bigger than this piece of cardboard. One day in 1946, a man, named, a man named Dick Fade was out in his office window on Halo Street. He saw that there was a hole in the middle of the street where a light bus was going to go. But truth be told, the city forgot to put in the light. So Mr. Fagan planted flowers in the hole, hole and put a sign up, Mill Ends Park, smallest park in the world. It officially became a city park in 1948. Now we go down. Now if you go downtown, you can find a park in the middle of the strip of Mato Parkway by Taylor Street. But you won't see this at the moment. No, no, we're just you couldn't even clever for anybody to see us. But when nobody's looking, they come out to play.
Pictures and Ralph Nelson for this amazing production. <laughs> lesson that will not only live in the minds of our children, but in their bodies and their hearts for years to come. And that means so much to us as parents. So thank you for your dedication. It means the world to us. Thank you. Yeah. 